All right. What are we talking about today? You're not going to tell me. You're going to wait. <laughs> I'm ready, baby. I'm ready. I'm going to wait. Let's get into it. <laughs> Have you ever yeah. heard... We're going to do reels? We're going to do reels, right? We'll do reels, yeah. Okay. Let's do reels. Welcome, everyone, to the Working Weights Podcast, Working Weights LLC Podcast. Coach Lambie here. Along for the ride is Dwayne Ulrich, a.k.a. Bobby Doro. Let's watch some reels. I'm excited. Very excited. Oh, this already doesn't look good. Me and my daughter explaining to my husband how we ended up with baby chickens while he was gone. Hi. Hi. How are you? You have questions. Yes. I, I had a lot of questions. I'm sure you had a lot of questions, but rest assured, we're going to answer them right now. How would happen it? to you? Did you bring a better attitude today? Oh. That's how you get stabbed. That's how. <laughs> that is how you get stabbed. That is not conducive to a good day. No. Why is he drinking out of that cup? You grabbed the wrong drink. What is this? That's my pumpkin spice latte. Kiss me. I'll be nightly beside the green, green grass. It's PSL season, everyone. <laughs> so I have a theory people don't actually like pumpkin as much as they say they do. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a seasonal flavor. Okay. Do you, do you like do you like pumpkin spice latte? No. At all ever. Uh nope, not really. I don't even like pumpkin pie. There's one pumpkin pie that I really like. It's from Emporia Pie House in uh Dallas, Texas. Everybody go there and get that pumpkin pie. It's fantastic. Otherwise, meh. Stallion and his family drove from Houston to Dallas one time. Just for pie. Just for the pies and brought them back. Yep. And they, they sell out quickly, folks. And they were amazing. Yeah. And they have right, a... Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Let's keep going. Everybody's go, talking about the new singer of Lincoln Park, but no one's talking about this legend. Yeah, you know Lincoln Park? Uh, yeah, I listened to Got a, a female bit singer, the... replaced Chester yeah. Bennington. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I listened. Yeah, so they did one live. I saw it. <sighs> Not that she's a bad singer. I just don't know that it's Linkin Park. You know? I don't know. No, I don't think Purist. so. Yeah. Let's see. Who's this legend? What is he on? What? Don't know what you're repeating of me. Put under pressure or kill in your Well, oh, you brought that yo right in his own range, huh? I know. <laughs> what is he writing? Hold on. <laughs> what is that? Is that an eagle? I think it's a vulture. It's a vulture. I began so nice. I can sing you the he flapping his arm. No. Ah. <laughs> My eyes are watering. <laughs> What was that? <laughs> the the condor. Who chooses the condor? What? Ah! It was a condor. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, that was a legend, and I hope no one out there is lactose intolerant, because the second part of that word is dairy. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, what a legend. Dude, I'm, I was, I was, I was crushing on his hair. Choose. Oh, that this was. was what my granddaughter says. Choose. Choose. Put your shoes on, baby. Choose. 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 Yep. Into the choose. Oh, man. He's putting it out there, bro. He's, he's all in. He's putting it out there. That show is. All right, man. Getting into today. So I saw some stuff come up in Twitter. I don't know why I spend so much time there. It gives me content. <clears throat> you Have you ever heard that Hong Kong has the highest life expectancy and the highest red meat consumption? I have heard that they have one of the highest uh, life expectancies. I did not know that they had the highest consumption of red meat. I did not know that. I would I would not have guessed that for the given population. Um, I don't know. Man, it, it must be important a lot of beef for sure. I did not. I did not know that. Yeah. But so you've de- taken a deep dive in this, haven't you? I looked off into it. Yeah, so somebody made a post and was like, how can red meat be bad for you when um, Hong Kong has the highest life expectancy, which they do, highest life expectancy in the world, and they have the highest red meat intake consumption, and they posted a link to article. Let me uh, – Safari. Can you see when I switch the tabs? Yes. You see that? Yep. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so it linked to this article here, uh, which is, I don't know, pitch pitchstone waters under the category of cattle, an article titled Meat Consumption and Longevity by a guy named Chris Gill. He's a cowboy. Look at him right there. Juicy steak yeah. front picture. It looks really good. <clears throat> yeah. So anyway, he writes this article and kind of goes through several things, says he's going to debunk, wait long enough and you'll see most medical facts debunked in this article. So, um, you know, the person who posted the post on Twitter was specifically talking about Hong Kong and then linked to this article. And this article has more than just the deal on Hong Kong. but uh yeah so i went through i went through some of it went through all of it actually and uh where's the thing in hong kong oh yeah right here <clears throat> so according to united nations data the life expectancy in hong kong is 82.38 years for men and 88.17 years for women and i think uh combined it's around 84 years or something and that is the highest life expectancy in the world uh, so previous to that was the Adventists in Loma Linda, California, and uh, they had a life expectancy of 80 years, but that was a while ago, and we don't have any updated data on them. So I'm not sure where the two vie in terms of who has higher life expectancy, you know, but anyway, so we'll get to the Hong Kong thing. So one of the other things that I saw in here, which was, uh, this is a nice introduction for the theme of the uh, podcast today. So he cites this 2015 study, right? Talking about the blue zones. You heard of the blue zones? I have not. I was Mm. about to ask you about it. So the blue zones, there's a a, uh, YouTube, uh, or sorry, not YouTube, a Netflix series on the YouTubes. This guy named uh, Dave Buettner, Dan Buettner went around to all these areas in the world that have the highest number of centurions, so people over the years of 100 years old. And he went around to these places and kind of asked a bunch of different things to figure out what the people who lived the longest were doing in those areas. (laughs) And he came up with this compilation of things. And um, so one of the things was like, there generally tends to be lower meat consumption and higher fruit and vegetable consumption in these areas, <clears throat> along with a whole bunch of other stuff, right? So not saying that, but the um, the 
carnivore crowd, the pro meat crowd really didn't like hearing that stuff. And there's been a lot of, um, of rebuttals to that saying, oh, well, I went to, to this country and they actually have, uh, you know, they actually eat a lot of meat there, blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> and this whole, this whole topic on the blue zones and how much meat is eaten there has turned into a crazy thing all in itself. So the blue zone thing came out, right? And it's like, well, they eat, they, they don't eat a lot of meat. They still eat some meat. They don't eat a lot, high fruits and vegetable intake, um, along with walking and meditation and all kinds of other things, right? So then the, uh, the pro meat crowd comes out and it's like, well, actually these people eat a lot of meat and that's why they're living so long. And so now there's this other study that has come out, or I guess maybe not a study, but uh, some guy did a whole deep dive into this and it's like, turns out that these areas actually have a high propensity for insurance fraud. And so the people who live to be over a hundred, like there just doesn't seem to be reporting of deaths. So <clears throat> somebody dies at like whatever, 89 and the family doesn't report the death. And so the government doesn't know the person died. So they just, you know what I mean? Like they keep counting how long they're living. And uh, so it's really wild. So, now all of the crazy. Um, now all of the the pro me people are are spitting <clears throat> this thing out right like oh actually these places don't live that long it's actually you know a bunch of people committing insurance fraud and life expectancy isn't long there it's like well a year ago you were saying that their life ex their long lives were due to how much red meat they ate so where are we at on this now <laughs> Holy so moly. anywho That's yeah so crazy. This, so this guy in this article uh, cites this 2015 study, several other studies, which he's thoroughly um, taking out of context and confused about and doesn't understand how to read them. So, but he gets this quote out of the study here, right? <clears throat> and he's saying that in Sardinia, which is Italy, uh, is one of the blue zones, right? So Sardinia is an island off the coast of Italy. And saying that, well, the meat consumption is higher amongst the longer lived people who are living up in the mountains, right, than those people who live in the valleys, according to this 2015 study. And the quote from the study <clears throat> is the identification of a hotspot of exceptional longevity, the longevity blue zone or LBZ in the mountain population of Sardinia has aroused considerable interest towards its traditional food as one of the potential causal factors, dot, dot, dot which means there's something missing there up to a short time ago. Well, how long is a short time ago? The LBZ population depended mostly upon livestock rearing and consumption of animal derived food was relatively higher than the rest of the Island. And he has emphasis added. So clicked on the study and <clears throat> guess where he got that out of it's out of the abstract here. Of course, he didn't read the whole thing. But even Which if you were to go yeah. on, even if you were to go on reading the abstract from where he started, so it turns out a short time ago is in the mid 1950s. Holy cow! Right. So oh, these literally, <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> right there. So in the mid 1950s, uh, the island of Sardinia started to have this transition, a nutrition transition where they started consuming less meat and more fruits and vegetables. And what this study actually says is uh, that, so these people were consuming this animal-based diet, and then that probably you know helped them in their younger years. But as they started to get into their older, older ages, 50 and 60, they experienced this nutrition transition and that it was probably a combination of the two. So it was... It was this traditional diet that helped keep them um, healthy and, and you know, thinking about this in terms of like natural selection, like m more geared to um, uh, towards sexual reproduction, right? So you're yeah. staying a little healthy in your younger years and stuff. And then once they started getting into the age where progression of, of you know, uh, diseases that we associate with longer lifespans start to happen around the 50s and 60s, they transitioned to a different diet where they're eating less meat and more fruits and vegetables. 
And, uh, you know, you can see this even nowadays, a larger proportion of the population still follows traditional diet based on cereal derived foods and dairy products. Um, where is it? Where is that? Where traditional is that? Where is diet, it? It, traditional diet, which introduced positive changes such as more variety, more increased variety. consumption mm -hmm. of fruits and vegetables and moderate meat intake. <clears throat> is yeah. that what you're looking for? Yeah, so the so the nutrition transition right here. So they went from this traditional diet to during this nutrition transition, started introducing positive changes. The authors note positive changes such as variety, increased consumption of fruits and vegetables, moderate meat intake. It could be speculated that these changes may have brought substantial health benefits to this particular aging group which was in need of nutrient-rich foods at the specific time, thereby resulting in decreased mortality risk and in turn lifespan extension. So this article isn't saying, well, these older populations are actually consuming more meat. They're saying, well, these people probably transitioned to this less meat, higher fruit and vegetable diet, and that helped them in their later life. So just... Uh, <clears throat> You know, that's, <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I was trying to catch there in the abstract somewhere. If it mentioned anything about what caused them, what, at what point do they make that change in their diet? I mean, it talked about mature age, but I mean, they just yeah, it's in old the, and just it's in the fifties. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's in their fifties and sixties. It's in, it's in the full, full text of the thing. So um, all this stuff is here. Everybody can go look at it. And it also said something about industrialization. So, uh, in yes. earlier it talked about talked about um, um, livestock rearing. In other words, they're they're farmer and animal people. Mm -hmm. So that's probably going to be the bulk of their of their food. What is what they're growing and what they're raising? But then with uh, uh, some industrialization, then they started picking up on these other things. And yeah cool yeah yeah, yeah. Bro, so as typical as typical in our conversations bro didn't read the whole thing he he didn't go past the abstract and he didn't really read the abstract very well he didn't re he didn't read the abstract very well he certainly doesn't understand what the abstract was saying um right and right. the abstract doesn't support the claim that he is making so getting yeah. onto this hong kong thing all right so yeah hong kong does in fact have the longest um uh, life expectancy in the world. And then, uh, so there were several, as I'm digging around for stuff, there were several claims to this Hong Kong thing. And uh, this article seemed to be the only one that actually had like a pretty good link to something. Uh, I mean, it was, it's harder than last time to try and find where people are getting this claim that Hong Kong consumes the most meat. Yeah, so anyway, pound of meat a day. That's ridiculous. Yeah, so you, you click on this link that he shared. Well, let's go back here for a second. So uh, Hong Kong has a, a 500 grams over one pound of meat. Uh, so that's not... It's not realistic. Uh, yeah, so 500 grams a day. Okay, Um. <clears throat> A pound of meat. So he links to this article, and and in this article they link to another thing. <laughs> this was this was difficult to track down, buddy. All right. So anyway, so this article that he links to, where he's getting this five hundred grams per day number, is actually saying, uh, "Hey, this <laughs> this level of meat intake is." Uh, promoting an increase in greenhouse gases. And so this article is actually calling for Hong Kong to reduce their meat intake. Actually a worldwide thing. All right. So within this article, okay, they um, they talk about this 500 grams a day. And where they're getting that from is this article. So this 500 grams a day of meat consumption isn't actually based on meat consumption it's based on trade data domestic exports and re-exports they're buying it and then they're selling it well they they are importing it they're buying some they are selling some but it isn't based on meat consumption right 
Right. Absolutely. Um, and so another thing that I found, so there were a lot of um, uh, like people on YouTube um, have referenced Hong Kong life expectancy and red meat intake and therefore red, how can red meat be so bad for you? Um, and a lot of their references come from this 2002 reporting of FAO. And I could not find that it, even in this. Um, I, I was able to track this wiki article down from one of them, Wikipedia. <clears throat> and even in the Wikipedia article, it references this FAO data, but the link is broken and um, you can't even get to the way back machine. But through um, through this Wikipedia article, it even says FAO figures for carcass mass availability with carcass mass for poultry estimated as ready to cook mass. And they talk about, um, so this carcass mass, so the FAO data is basically the same thing. It's based on import and export of whole carcasses. So that includes stuff that you're not going to consume, bones, ligaments, tendons, um, uh, they Boilage. say, yes, Trims. spoilage and downstream waste and amounts consumed by pets. So this even accounts for um, uh, meat that's coming into the country that is later going to be turned into pet food, dog food and cat food and stuff. And so the way people are deriving this number is they're taking this whole carcass weight and dividing it by the number of, of in uh, permanent residents in Hong Kong and saying, well, these people in Hong Kong are consuming this much meat. So right off the bat, yeah, that's a wrong number. That it's is contrived. not how much, that's not how much people are consuming here. And you can see, um, they say here, as an example, the difference for 2002, when FAO figure for the U S per capita meat consumption was 274 pounds, the USD estimate, SDA estimate of U.S. per capita loss adjusted meat consumption was 138 pounds. So this FAO data and this trade data isn't taking into account loss adjusted. This is just meat availability. It's not yeah. meat consumption. It isn't total meat consumption. It's just meat availability. Right. 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 And then, <laughs> so th this... Uh, this really puts a stinger in the whole thing here. So this was released in 2021, and this is actual a report of the second Hong Kong population-based food consumption survey. So this is food frequency questionnaires and, um, you know, 24-hour food recall and stuff that they sent out to the residents of Hong Kong. It asked how much, you know, we've gone over this with the, uh, the nurse's health study and stuff. How mm -hmm. many, how many you know, burgers do you eat? How many lasagnas, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And when we get down to to uh, how much they're consuming, meat and poultry were consuming the amount of 73 or 78.36 grams a day. Meat was 78.36 grams. Poultry was 32.12. So that's a far cry wow. from 500 grams. Yeah, holy moly, absolutely. Right? For yep. the meat group, around 70% of the amount consumed was from pig. Pork, wow. So this idea that Hong Kong is consuming 500 grams of beef per day doesn't hold up. So even if we were to say they were consuming 500 grams of red, of red meat, it isn't beef. It's pork. Hong Kong has the highest consumption of pork. So how you can, you know, like the claim that uh, these people are eating a whole bunch of beef and living long, and the reason they're living long is because they're eating so much beef, isn't supported. So look at the number there uh, from cattle or calves, uh, 18 grams a day. <clears throat> and then of the poultry group, most was from chicken, 30 grams. And this, catch this, fish was consumed in the amount of 43 grams, grams per day. Per day. What That's does that right. tell you? Yep. So I they're consuming fish. they're consuming more fish than they are from cattle and calf. Now, to put this into perspective for everyone, they're consuming on average 18, let's call it 19 grams per day 
of beef. 28 grams is an ounce. Mm -hmm. They're not even consuming one ounce of beef per day. All right. So the actual so when when we actually ask the part the uh the inhabitants the permanent residents of hong kong how much food are you consuming per day the amount of meat they're consuming is about one third of what we consume in the u.s the right. permanent residents now right. where the heck is the rest of this meat going all right. So another thing we have here, uh, the the University of Hong Kong published this uh, study here. HKU Med finds high red meat consumption likely to increase the risk of heart cardiovascular disease and diabetes in a systematic review of more than 4.4 million people in a meta analysis. Anywho, all right. The population of Hong Kong is 7.346 million. If those seven million people are consuming, you know, 78. Uh, grams of of red meat and 38 grams of chicken and 43 grams of fish. Where's the rest of the red meat going, right? Well, 2023, last year, Hong Kong saw 34 million tourists. Holy cow. And during the pandemic, that number dropped drastically. So they're, you know, uh, 23, the number of national arrivals, visitor arrivals in Hong Kong amounted to 34 million. This was a significant increase from around 600,000 the previous year, yet still below the level of pre-pandemic years. So before the time of the cove, they were seeing more than 34 million tourists per year. In the first six months of 2024, the visitor arrivals exceeded 21 million. So if that continues on for the rest of the year, they'll see 42 million tourists yep. this yep. year. So who's eating all the red meat in Hong Kong? Tourists. tourists. People that coming from Western countries who consume mm -hmm. a lot of meat are coming to Hong Kong and consuming a lot of meat in Hong Kong. And just a reminder, there's only 7 million people. Well, there, that's a lot. But there's 7 million people in Hong Kong and 21 million just in the first six months of this year. Nearly that, four times the population yes. Yes. in tourists visits the city of Hong Kong. Yes. All right. Another thing that we have to consider here in Hong Kong is they actually have the, one of the lowest smoking rates in the world. Uh, I, I don't remember where it is in here. It's down somewhere around 10%. In the U.S., we're somewhere around 14 or so. Uh, another thing to consider is that the permanent population in Hong Kong is relatively homogenous, meaning they're all the same ethnicity or race. In other countries that have high meat consumption and low life expectancy, like the United States, Australia, the UK, not as homogenous, especially right. in America. Oh, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And then we wow. have, let me click on this. We have this uh, um, this paper here, Understanding the Increase in Life Expectancy in Hong Kong. And this is um, uh, from the University of Hong Kong, Hong Kong, China. So in this paper, they're saying really what we attribute the life expectancy increase is a drastic increase in medical availability, medical technology. So our ability to keep people alive is getting better and better and better. And in Hong Kong specifically, that's kind of the main thing that they're attributing this longer life expectancy to. And they even go on to say in here, that the younger populations who are consuming, so the older populations where we're getting this life expectancy number from, the people who actually are living into their 80s and 90s and beyond, don't consume the amount of red meat that the younger populations are. And they are actually predicting um, an increase in some of these chronic diseases like heart, cardiovascular disease and diabetes. And that you can find that over here in this meta-analysis. 
I love they broke it down into a, a, a math equation. <laughs> like, yeah. Sweet. Yeah. So uh, does Hong Kong have the highest life expectancy? True. True. Yes, they do. Do they have the highest meat consumption? Well, no. In no. the city of Hong Kong, there is the most meat consumption that happens around, amongst the, the entire world. However, that consumption is not happening by the permanent residents of Hong Kong. That is happening due to trade and tourism. So it is us Westerners who eat high meat diets, travel to Hong Kong, and eat a whole bunch of high meat meals over there. And they and are then, more than happy to feed it to you because you'll pay for it. Right. And the same thing goes – so I lost a lot of, of – uh, articles and YouTube videos on debunking these blue zones. And well, I went to Sardinia and actually all the restaurants I went to had a lot of meat on the menu. Well, of course they do. They're catering to you. How, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, if I go, if I go to a saltgrass steakhouse, there's probably going to be a lot of meat there. <laughs> yeah. Because people and, go there to eat meat. That's fine. It's yeah. It's um it's kind of wild. Um so here in this here in the States, when people visit from other countries and they come in, we tend to take them out for American cuisine. However, when we travel to other places, we tend to eat American cuisine. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so I haven't done a lot of traveling. The places I've traveled to, um, we already have that cuisine here for the most part. And um, I, I remember a group of us went to uh, a European country. Uh, it's called Moldova. And we mm -hmm. landed in Kiev and uh, the, in the Ukraine. And the first thing we saw, first restaurant we saw because we were hungry, was a McDonald's. And mm -hmm. we went there. And mm -hmm. that was the busiest McDonald's I'd ever seen. Mm -hmm. Because everybody from the airport that lands there, they go to the McDonald's, mm -hmm. which is crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. We went um so we went to Hawaii some number of years back, right? And so uh we went to uh, Oahu, the island of Oahu, and you have Waikiki there. And that's where most of the people spend their time is on Waikiki. And that's where all of the McDonald's and Burger King and, and all that stuff. And so luckily, Christy and I really enjoy food. And when we went there, we specifically avoided all of the restaurants at yeah. Waikiki because yeah. we wanted to taste yeah. Hawaiian cuisine. We went out to the places that were serving, um, you know, spam recipes. And we had the, uh, the purple... Oh, I forget what you call it. Is it uni? No, I don't think that's it. No. E emo, yeah. eno, something like that. The purple potatoes. We had purple potato pancakes. Yeah, we had yeah, purple, yeah. purple potato French toast. We had like we we traveled all that stuff. Um when we went to Louisiana for um, you know, a hot rod show, and it was the first time I've driven through Louisiana, but, you know, Christy had never been there and we went. And so we wanted to taste some Cajun cuisine. So when you're in Louisiana, what are you going to eat? Alligator and frog legs, right? Yeah, yeah. And so we actually found a place. And so we asked everybody, you know, because usually we go to Whataburger or McDonald's or something. And we were like, hey, can we pick a place to go? Like, please, can we <laughs> have this? Yeah. It was like <laughs> pulling teeth to get yeah. people to go anywhere other than some you know, traditional yeah. uh, American thing. Uh, when I went to Iraq, when I was in the Marines, Kuwait, so I went the first time and we weren't very established there. And you had, we had the chow hall, of course, which served uh, all, all of the foods that they serve in the, in the armed forces, American cuisine. But then you also had vendors, Iraqi vendors on base. And then uh, uh, also when we were Kuwait, who were selling the traditional foods there. And so you could go in and you can get a, a uh, uh, an Iraqi made coffee, which was fantastic. Oh boy, those were potent. 
and you could get kebabs and all these other different um, foods that they had there. When I went back the second time, all of that was gone and it was Burger King, McDonald's, Pizza Hut. It, it was, wow. <laughs> It, and wow. and it was disappointing, you know, because the food over there was actually pretty good. It smelt awful. I'm going to say that, but it was actually pretty tasty. Yeah. So, you know, it just. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a question for you. So uh, the residents of Hong Kong that live there, not yeah. the tourism. I, I wonder what the rest of their what the rest of their diet looks like. What kind of vegetables are they eating? And we've talked about it before, but I can't remember what we what we discovered was what's the consumption of, of like rice? Um, yeah. So um, hold on, let me go back to it because that's going to be a major part of their sure. Their life so we can see, yeah. So food consumption, cereals and grains, almost four hundred grams a day, and sixty um, percent of that is coming from the rice subgroup. So. Almost 400 grams a day, 60% of that's coming from rice. The other is going to be pastas and noodles, including rice, wheat, rice and wheat, and other cereals and grains part of groups. So, you know, they're consuming traditional Chinese yeah, dishes, yeah, which is yeah. rice and going to be rice noodles. Sometimes they make noodles from wheat, uh, but a, a huge chunk of what they're eating is coming from yeah. cereals and grains. Right. Um, bakeries and Chinese pastries, not so much, around 45 grams a day. Fruits and vegetables. So between the two of them, you know, 320 grams a day between fruits and vegetables, that's a lot of fruits and vegetables. Yes. I'm reading. Go ahead. I see you. I see you reading. Leafy vegetables and brassica vegetables contributed over half of the daily vegetable consumption. Yeah. Another 17% was from fruiting vegetables and squashes and gourds. Uh, slightly less than 10% from root vegetables and tubers. So that's like carrots and potatoes and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Citrus fruits contributed 30% of the daily fruit consumption. And the other one was from palm fruits. Um, let's Google that because I... I don't want to misrepresent what that is. So while you're doing Oops. that, it's like something just occurred to me also. As, as, as Americans, when we see all these vegetable things, we just hit, what's the first thing you think of? I mean, when you, especially with leafy, leafy vegetables, what's the first mm -hmm. thing we think? Oh, it's a salad. Salad, yeah. There are so many other there, ways to prepare leafy vegetables. Yeah, so they're, they're most likely consuming a lot of what we could think of, um, like bok choy, yes. uh, spinach, yeah, kale, yes. stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, that's a lot of their consumption. So palm, I think I'm pronouncing that right. So palm would be uh, the core contains multiple seeds. So, uh, you know, are they eating a lot of apples and pears? Well, pears maybe, um, but they're probably consuming a lot of... Uh, What's that? Pomegranate stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so tr you know, traditional Chinese cuisine is what we're looking at here. Cool. Meat and meat and poultry. We got that out. Eggs fish. and egg consumption. Yeah, fish. A lot of 40, 43 grams a day. That's not insignificant. Of course, they're in the ocean. That's where they're, they're just uh, yeah. Right they're there. next right next to the ocean. That's uh, abundant. And to I'm actually surprised. So I would think that would be higher than that being right next mm -hmm. to the ocean. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. they tend to like pork though, you know. Most of their diet is um of their meat consumption is from pork. Yeah, amazing. Amazing. Egg products, 26 grams a day, milk and dairy, 24 grams a day. That's one ounce, folks. Yeah. Not a lot of eggs and dairy. Yeah. 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 Uh local favorites, dim sum is a local favorite. Uh, Su Mei and Lo Mei, a group of mainly meat and poultry products which have been barbecued, roasted, or marinated, was consumed at 15 grams a day. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Cool. So they're, they're, the, the life expectancy in Hong Kong is not due to high red meat consumption. Oh, one other thing. Let's talk about that. If you're going to propose that the life expectancy in Hong Kong is due to the red meat consumption, why isn't America would be number two? And I think Australia is like number three or four or something like that. Uh, why doesn't I that actually, fact bear out for that's us? Actually, 
Yeah. Why, why aren't we up there at the top? So like in terms of longevity, I think America ranks, ranks like 55th, somewhere between 55th and 60th, but we're the right. second highest meat consumers in the world. And then so what people will argue is, oh, we're consuming all these um, uh, refined and processed carbohydrates. Well, so is Hong Kong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> White rice and noodles. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So eh. it doesn't hold water, doesn't hold weight. All right. That one's in the bed. Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel hey, like just we've so, exhausted it. Yeah. Just so uh just a note for you people out there that are um well, for whoever is even remotely interested. So coach sprang this on me today. I had no clue what we we're going to talk about, oh, yeah. which happens from time to time. But uh, he goes, yeah, yeah. I said, well, wait, so it's kind of exciting sometimes. So I don't know if for those of you that were watching as he was talking, you probably saw me. <laughs> so I'm trying to read it, <laughs> trying to read it. Yeah. I'm trying to burn through there in a heartbeat. And, uh, but just what a great episode. What a great episode. Just you know what, so much comes back to, and we've 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 had a lot of sidebar and kind of off air conversations about this with some other projects we're involved in. But um, man, people just pick and choose what they want out of an abstract. But mm -hmm. if you don't read it, if you don't yeah, understand what guy, the abstract's trying to prove. That guy absolutely cherry picked. No, from that abstract. Close. Yeah, yeah, it, that's not even doesn't even closely resemble no. what that abstract says. Not at all. Not at all. Bless his heart. So, uh, you know, and to that point, uh, do I think he did it on purpose? I don't I don't think so. I think he just got to that part in the abstract and his brain turned off. I think he continued reading, but I think his brain turned off because he heard what he wanted to hear. He got the point that he needed to get. And yeah. and that 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 supports his conclusion. Um right. Uh, and I think if you were to sit down with him and Rita, he would probably give a concession that, uh, oh, okay, yeah, these, you know, there was a transition and this paper isn't saying what I'm saying. This paper is saying, uh, you, I mean, you'd have to provide that concession. So, yeah. and then that other study he provided on meat longevity um, worldwide. So that one also takes into account meat availability. It doesn't actually look at meat consumption. And within that paper itself, you can actually attribute smoking to longer yes. lifespan. So be careful, you know, these unadjusted yeah. numbers that people are using, you can get terrible, terrible conclusions from it. Like, uh, longer people who live longer smoke more, you know, and it, it, most of it just has to do with being wealthy. So per you know capita, people, yeah. Go ahead. I'm just going to say, you know what people throw out a lot so often, and I can't tell you the number of times I've heard this, is so they meet somebody or they see some guy on television, he he just had his 110th birthday or whatever, and, and they ask him about, well, what do you, you know, what do you, what do you, yeah. what do you attribute this to? Yeah. Yeah, I smoke a pack of camels a day. That's right. And, and I drink uh, I drink good liquor. Yep. <laughs> you know, and they're like, yeah, oh, it worked for him. <laughs> that's that's exactly right. Yeah, One the number the number like 20 billion people on the planet or something. It's like it worked for him. By golly, it's gotta work for me. Jeez. Yeah, the the number of the, especially in the United States, the number of those people that get interviewed when they you know, live past the 102, 105, whatever. What do you attribute your lifespan to? And it's, you know, I remember seeing uh, one old guy. He was, he was, I think he was a Marine. Maybe he was in the army or something. And he was like, well, you know, I eat a pound of bacon every day in the morning. And then I smoke a cigar and then I have a shot of whiskey. And that's where I attribute my long life to. <laughs> okay. I think I've seen that one. <laughs> Yeah. All right, let's cut this one uh, to the end here. So I hope some minds were blown here. Hope we debunked some uh, theories going around. Hope you guys get something from this. We'll see you next time. Coach Lambie and Dwayne out. See you.